Hey, Doc Jones here from the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. And I have my lovely assistant, Isabel, here today. How are you today? Good. Good? You look good. And we're going to make some elderberry syrup. Uh, I had sort of a startling experience this morning uh, when I came out of the house and it was cold. Were you cold when you came out of the house? I turned myself right around and went back in and got a coat today. So that uh, tells us what when it gets cold out like that. It's going to be winter. That's right. It's going to be winter. And winter is stinky, except that we can get elderberry syrup in the winter because it helps us with colds and flus and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to make some elderberry syrup now that it's winter, all right? And uh, we've prepared, if you'd like, um, the Homegrown Herbalist Elderberry Syrup Kit. And you can pick one of those up at homegrownherbalist.net. And it has everything in it that you need to make some really yummy elderberry syrup. Um, but you know what? Elderberry syrup isn't just yummy. It's also medicine. Did you know that? You knew that. Um, elderberry has some really remarkable activity uh, against uh, coronaviruses, influenza viruses, rotaviruses, all the guys that cause head colds and flus and influenzas and things like that. Um, and even some of our more exciting respiratory viruses we've had this year. Uh, elderberry has shown some good activity against some of those guys. And so if you take that, it makes it harder for the virus to replicate in your body. You know what that means? Replicate, to duplicate, make more viruses, right? And it makes it harder for the virus to attach to your cells so that it can get in and make you sick, right? So that's good. So we're going to make some elderberry syrup. And besides that, it tastes good. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, there's several kinds of elder uh, that you can grow on your own property. Um, the uh, Just the common mountain elder is real good. You can collect those about anywhere in the Mountain West. Uh, we have the elderberries that we grow in our place are mostly from a plant called Sambucus nigra, which is the black elder. Um, the black elder is really great. It makes a lot of berries. It makes big berries. And it's pretty well behaved. Some of the elders are a little enthusiastic about spreading around your property uh, with root runners and things. Um, but the Sambucus nigra, the black elder, tends to behave better and just makes its little tree and it's happy and it doesn't go chasing all over the place. Um, and it's really pretty. The, el the leaves are sort of uh, dark magenta colored, right? And uh, really a pretty plant. Um, I use, with elder, I use the leaf, the berry, and the flower, all three of those as medicine. Um, and uh, the leaf is by far the strongest. That's what I usually use for adults if they're fighting something. Um, if you use the leaf in little kids, it'll sometimes give a bellyache, so I don't use it on little people. The berry you can use on anybody, and the flower I use on the very tiniest people, right? Little toddlers and guys like that. Um, so let's make some syrup. So let me show you what we've got here in the kit. Uh, first of all, we've got a bottle, right? So you can put your bottle in there. Elderberries. Some elderberries, right? What's that say? Ginger? Ground cloves. Ground cloves. Cinnamon. And cinnamon, all right? Well, so why are we putting all that stuff in there, do you think? To make it into syrup. Yeah, it's going to make a syrup, but it makes it taste good too, right? But it also... Uh, both the cinnamon and the ginger are warming herbs, okay? So they stimulate your body. They warm things up. They get things moving, and that helps uh, also. It sort of acts like what they call a catalyst. Have you ever heard of a catalyst? Mm -mm. It's a chemistry thing. That's what chemists say. They say words like that uh, so they feel like it's okay that they paid so much to go to school. Yeah. But <laughs> anyway, a catalyst is, a, is something that makes things work better, okay? So it makes a chemical reaction go faster. It warms things up. And so in an herb formula, if you put something zingy like ginger or cinnamon in it, it, it sort of wakes your body up and says, hey, you're getting some herbs, right? So your body pays more attention and you absorb them better and you use them better and it works better, okay? So it's not just that it makes it taste better. It's actually doing important things. So uh, what you'll need, oh, and there's also a hanky in there uh, that we'll be straining things through later. What you'll need to do this is a pot. Um, you'll need some water and uh, honey. some honey, right? And a strainer and a child cheater. And what's that? A funnel, a funnel. right? 
okay. So we're going to need all that stuff, and you'll have to provide that yourself. We're not going to mail honey and water to you. You can find that at home. But all this other stuff comes from the kit. So, shall we get started? All right, so what we're going to do first is we're going to put this water uh, on to boil. And this is about three and a half cups of water, okay? So let's pour that on in there. And can you turn that little stove on, Isabel? To where? Just high, however high it'll go. There you go, turn it all the way up. So, you know, I'm, I'm a, f a fellow who really almost never boils herbs, very rarely. Um, usually I'm gonna make a quick infusion, a tea, and I'm gonna do that by heating the water up, bringing it to a boil, taking it off the heat, throwing my herbs in there with a lid, and that's it. I'm not gonna cook the herbs, okay? And the reason for that is that some herbs, if you get them too hot, it ruins them, right? Some herbs like peppermint, uh, just about anybody in the mint family, they have a lot of oils in them that, that turn into steam really easily. And so it boils the medicine off with if you boil them. You know what I mean? But elderberry doesn't care. You can cook elderberry for an hour, it doesn't care at all. So it just kind of depends on what chemical in it is. Yeah, so open that up. So what we're actually doing is what you would call a decoction, right? That's an herbal decoction. So pour those rascals in there. Not a girl. They're cute, aren't they? Okay. And then here's our ginger. So we had um, two thirds of a cup of elderberries. If you wanted to do this at home with your own stuff, we had a, a cup and a half, three and a half cups of water, uh, two thirds of a cup of elderberries. And then what does that say? Two tablespoons of ginger? Mm -hmm. Throw that in there. And if you just had a fresh ginger, you could use that too, couldn't you? In fact, uh, the dry ginger is a little stronger. So you could probably use a little more fresh ginger. What does that say? I don't have my glasses on. That's the One cinnamon. One teaspoon of cinnamon. One teaspoon, all right. So you got a teaspoon of cinnamon. Throw that in. There you go. And then that's the cloves. How much cloves does it say is in there? Half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of cloves. Grounded. Grounded clothes. All right. Throw those rascals in. Okay. Now we're going to take our child cheater. I don't know what these are really called, but we always called them child cheaters at our house. It always made the kids sad when you're cleaning out the frosting bowl and using that thing, right? <laughs> all right. So stir that up. We're going to mix all that together. And then we're going to bring that to a boil. Um, and once it comes to a good, you know, rolling boil, we'll turn it way down so it's just simmering, all right? And then I'm going to simmer it for, I don't know, half an hour, an hour maybe. Um, and that's going to do two things. First of all, it's going to, you know, the hot water is a phenomenal solvent, so it's going to be pulling all that great chemistry out of those berries. Um, and it's also going to uh, cook down and decrease the amount of water a little bit, all right? How's that looking? Looks like elderberries. That looks like elderberries. What do you know? <laughs> All right. So we'll let that cook for a minute. That uh, that we let that sit, boil for a half an hour or an hour. All right. Simmer, not boil, just simmer, right? And uh, you can see how dark this has gotten. See how dark that is, Isabel? That's pulled all that stuff out of there. And then I'm going to kind of smash those berries a little bit. You know, you might as well get all the juice, don't you think? If we're going to all that work. You could use fresh berries too if you've got them. But the dry berries are handy and you can usually get those about any time of year on the internet. All right, so now we'll actually turn that off. So now what we're going to do is after I've simmered that for about a half hour to an hour, I'm actually going to let it sit for another half hour or so to cool off, okay? And that's just going to let that extraction continue, all right? Um, and then once we've done that, we're going to need our our pot and our strainer and our hanky. Our hanky goes like this. That's right. Our hanky goes just like that. Just like goat milk. That's just like straining the goat milk. That's right. <laughs> and a girl. All right. And so we're going to... Just pour these elderberries right through there. You ready? 
You think we'll make a big mess? Mm. I usually make a big mess. We'll get our child cheater there. And we will get all those rascals out, okay? We're just gonna let that strain for a minute. And get all that great juice. See how it's making the hanky purple? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's making it maroon. Maroon, that's right. So if you drink this, you'll have maroon innards. And well, that's kind of cool, right? Have you ever had maroon innards before? No, they look great. Maroon innards, that's fun. All right, so we're gonna let that strain for a minute. The other reason that you let it cool a little bit, and I haven't let this cool as much as I ought to, but the other reason you let it cool is that you can, you know, grab that and squeeze it and not burn your fingers. So we'll just let that strain for a minute. All right, now let's get serious about squishing this stuff. Not get your fingers dirty. And not burn grandpa's fingers. Boy, that's still very hot even with the gloves. Smart you. guys let this sit for an hour, see? But this has to be a foot. But that would be a yeah, that would be a long video, wouldn't it? <laughs> Alright, so we've got our uh, elderberries strained, right? And now what do we have to do? Put the honey in. Ha! Huh. Why aren't you doing that? Put that in there. Here. There's the child cheater. Good work. Okay. Now, you know, let's talk about honey for a minute. Um, first of all, I don't know if you knew this, but you should never give honey to a baby that's less than a year old. Did Why? you know that? Why? Because sometimes it makes them very, very sick and they can get something called infantile botulism, which is very bad for a little baby, so it makes them sick. Once they're older than that, it's okay. You don't want to give it. You don't want to give it to anybody who's not over a year old. And, and you can use, uh, you know, sometimes people ask me what kind of honey should I use. It doesn't really matter. The honey has got two functions. It's a flavoring agent, right? Makes it taste good. It also has some preservative properties. Um, but the honey also, uh, if you use raw honey, then it has enzymes and vitamins and all kinds of stuff in it that's good for you, right? So that's good too, if you can do that. So if you're using raw honey, it's particularly important that this not be too hot or you'll break down all those enzymes and vitamins and stuff, okay? If you're just using honey you got at the store that's been pasteurized and processed and stuff, it's already dead. All right, so put that right here. Open that bottle. And then we're gonna put it in. Let me do this, because it's kind of heavy. And hot. And hot. All right. And it's stain the sheet. Ha! Look at that. We need one more. You do, don't you? All right, so that is how you make elderberry syrup. How's that look to you? That's good. That looks pretty yummy, doesn't it? You can take it home. You can take it home, and I would keep this in the fridge. Um, it'll last better that way. And I would take as a dose of that, I would take a couple of big old spoonfuls of that. Every several, day? So yeah, I'd do it several times a day, you know. Um, if you did that two or three times a day, that'd be great, especially if you're coming down with something. More often is better, right? But uh, even just a sort of a general, you know, wintertime tonic, if you took that twice a day, that'd be really good for you. So this is Dr. Patrick Jones from the Homegrown Herbalist School with Isabel True, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have any important questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, me too. So we're done. And uh, thanks very much for watching. And I uh, hope you enjoy uh, making yourself some elderberry syrup. And remember, we do have the, uh, the elderberry syrup kit. You can make your own. And uh, that stuff really is tasty and quite good for you. So thanks for watching. Mm hmm.